Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to unit four, day two, part two of the real number system. All right. And so in this lesson, we're going to continue what we left off with last time, which is understanding uh, the different categories and subcategories of various numbers that make up the real number system. All right. And so we're going to start by just filling this out. Friends, you're going to need to know how to label this diagram. All right. And so last time I gave you a mnemonic device, uh, which was never walk in rain to help you know where each of the letters. So you start with the N and it is never walk in rain. Okay. Where the N stands for natural the W stands for whole, the I stands for integers, the R stands for rational, okay? And then this box, or this circle rather, over here is irrational, okay? Which is the opposite of rational. So this, these are rational, these are irrational, and all of this makes up the real number system, or these are real numbers. You know what? That's right. These are all real numbers, okay? If they fall anywhere on this, okay? And so really quickly, I also want to remind us of just one of the ways that we talk and discuss about how we can think about this, all right? So a couple things to help us with this, right? Um, we remember we said, we thought about where we are here at Blair, we are in Ghent, all right? And then Ghent is located inside of Norfolk. And Norfolk is located at, in Virginia, VA. And VA is represented inside of the U.S. of A, all right? And then if I wasn't in the U.S. of A, maybe I could be in somewhere like Canada, right? So, and we're using this to help us understand, right, that everybody who lives in Ghent lives in Norfolk, but not everybody who lives in Norfolk lives in Ghent, right? So, the when we, the, uh, the circles that are outside applies to the ones inside. So, Ghent is in Norfolk, Ghent is also in Virginia, Ghent is also in the U.S., but everybody's in the U.S. isn't in Ghent, Everybody who's in VA isn't in Ghent. Everybody's in Norfolk's not in Ghent. Okay, so again, when we think about where we land in our circles, the circles outside of it applies, okay? And this can help you sort of understand it. And understanding this, friends, is extremely important, okay? And so you're going to be asked questions like, hey, are all integers whole numbers? Well, again, no, not all integers are whole numbers, or you might be asking a question, right? Are all natural numbers whole numbers? Well, yeah, because all of the natural numbers fall within the whole number circle, okay? So, guys, I know that can be confusing. Friends, if I were you, I would make sure. Maybe i would make some flashcards with some of these definitions. You got to make sure that you understand the different terms, all right? And then also, you got to make sure you just understand this diagram, all right? What's, what's outside is true for what's inside, but what's outside isn't, you know, it, it's, it goes it goes outward, it doesn't go inward, okay? Now, let's, uh, let's look at some, fill in some blanks just as kind of reminder. So every natural number is a whole number, right? So every number, all right, so every number that is a natural is, a whole number and every whole number is an integer and every integer is a rational number right and so that's just trying to get us to see what I've just kind of been trying to illustrate right again every one of these is this everyone is this is these every one of the, all of these is that right um, and then and rational and irrational numbers, they make up what is called the real number system, right? 
So again, all of the numbers that we're going to discuss, right? If it asks, all of them are real, okay? Every single one that we're gonna talk about this year are real, right? When you move on to high school, you are gonna maybe be introduced to imaginary numbers, numbers that are not uh, real, all right? Now, all right, here's where I just wanna recap uh, some of our definitions, okay? So the, the counting numbers, if I were you, if I, I would take a highlighter, uh, a color pencil, again, you got to make sure that you emphasize or highlight these keywords. So natural numbers are what we know as counting numbers, right? So when you learn to count, it's one, two, three, four, so on and so forth, right? Counting numbers, right? And then whole numbers are all of the counting numbers and zero, okay? So Whole numbers include all natural numbers plus zero. All right, and then to go up, so now we have all of our whole numbers, right? But then we're also going to add the negatives, okay? So all of our whole numbers and negatives are now our integers, right? So both positive and negative whole numbers, and that includes zero, right? And then we got rational numbers. And for rational numbers, it is important for us to understand that it can be expressed as a fraction, as a simple fraction, okay? So if it's written as a fraction, that is uh, a rational number. Also, that lets me know when I put in the, the fraction into decimal, uh, decimals, my fraction needs to, you know, it needs to have an ending, right? If it goes on, it, it you know, or it could have a pattern. So um, this could be decimals that, um, that have a pattern, okay, that repeats, but have a pattern, all right, or it has kind of an ending. That's what those look like as decimals. All right, let me say decimals have, a, again, they decimals have a pattern or it ends, and we're, we're going to see that here in just a minute. And then lastly, we have irrational, okay? And then these are numbers that cannot be expressed as a simple fraction. In other words, they have a non-terminating decimal, which means that it doesn't end. It just repeats and it has no pattern. Two, okay, there's no pattern to it, right? It doesn't repeat the same number, but it's just kind of all random, okay? Now, okay, with that said, now we are going to, I've already given y'all this, again, this is just to help you remember, right? Never walk in rain. And that is for natural, whole, integer and it's pronounced integers not integers okay a lot of people say that integers <laughs> and then it's rational all right so to end our notes all we are going to do is we are going to put a circle around all of the rational numbers and this is like an x but in and what i'm going to do is i'm just going to put a cross over it um, and yeah, and all the irrational. So circle all of the rational and put a cross or a X over the, um, irrational. So I'm going to do two just to get you started, right? So negative 36, well, negative 36 is a whole number. Uh, I'm sorry. It's an integer, right? And that is a rational number. So I'm just going to put a circle there. All right. Now. Let's look at, you know, this, no, you know what? Let's look at negative uh, square root of six. Well, negative, I don't know what the square root of six is. So what I would encourage you to do is to go to Desmos, right? Whenever you have a radical, we're going to talk about, you know, square roots uh, next week, but I'm going to show you, let me get my Desmos calculator up, slide over her. Okay. So. All right, so I'm going to do the negative 
square root of, it was six. And if we look at this decimal, right, it has four, four, nine, four, eight, nine, seven, four, three, and it's just a bunch of numbers. And really, it continues. It stops right there, but that, that decimal really continues on, okay? That's a long decimal that doesn't have an end, and it's not simple, okay? So that is irrational, all right? So, so this is irrational. So I put a cross there, all right? So again, let's... I want you to just kind of see each of the numbers. If it's, again, if it's rational, put a circle. And again, use what we have here or use your previous notes to help you, all right? So I want you to pause this video, all right? And I want you, I don't watch the video any further, okay? I know, I, listen, I be seeing y'all that be watching it and even when I tell you to pause it, I need you to pause it, okay? So pause it. And then see if you can do this on your own. This only is going to help you if you have tried to do it on your own first. All right, so pause it. All right, all right. So let's, uh, let's get into it. So this is negative two four, and four ninths. That's a mixed number, but it is written as a simple fraction. So that is irrational, that's rational. Okay, that's rational, All right? If I do the square root of 144, put that into the calculator, that's gonna give me 12. 12 is a rational number. So I don't, I need you to not get confused. Just cause you see a square root doesn't mean automatically that it's irrational. You actually have to figure out what that square root is, okay? Let's do square root of 11, okay? I wanna, I want us to see this. Just, I just want us to see one more example or this, right? So again, square root of 11, this is 3.31662479, long decimal, kind of keeps repeating, um, even though it stops. So that is irrational. Okay, negative six, the, the absolute value of negative six, if you put that into decimals, I'm not gonna, for the sake of time, do that again, but put it in a decimal, so that's gonna give you six because this absolute value is the distance that a number is from zero. So that's gonna be six, so that's rational, okay? 0 0.045, okay, that could be written, um, really, if I wrote this as a fraction, it would be 45 over uh, 10,000, okay? So even though that's a longer decimal, it does have an end, it doesn't keep going, and doesn't have a lot of num different numbers. Uh, so that's also rational. Zero is also rational. 2.33, even though that's repeating, that is rational because it's a repeating decimal. Okay, 4.3, also rational. This four times the 10 to the negative one, that's 0 0.4. That is, um, that is uh, rational. This, because it is going on and there's a bunch of random numbers, that is irrational. Also, pi is 3.14, and it's a bunch of other numbers behind it. That's also irrational. Nine, negative, the square root of negative nine. I'm sorry, the negative square root, uh, sorry, the opposite of the square root of nine, the square root of nine is three. The opposite of that is negative three. So negative three, that is rational. Five sevenths, rational. 19, rational. 72.6. That is also rational. And then 25 over five, 25 divided by five is five. That is also rational, all right? And so, hey friends, hopefully, you know, you are seeing more examples of this, okay? We're gonna continue practicing this, all right? Um, and so in this lesson, we've reviewed what the real number system is, and we've discussed, you know, how the different subsets are related, all right? And we're gonna continue practicing. Uh, so hop over to Desmos and get some practicing.